Hi, I want to show you how I made my first short film called Tissue using my phone with my family and no crew, no equipment, no money, and why I did it this way. Isso, isso, olhou pra cima e ficou bom. Que isso? Let's go. So one day I went up to my sister and asked, Hey, you want to start a little movie I'm gonna make? And she said, Sure. And we made a little short film. Foi. Isso. Vou mostrar sua cara. Tá sofrendo. Não, pra frente. Tem tudo. Tirar. Before continuing, I'll be spoiling the whole thing if you haven't noticed. So you may want to watch the film first if you want. So I've been meaning to make a short film for a long time. I never had the time to sit down and write. And one day I got tired and I said, screw it. Just grab your phone and make a little movie. <laughs> so let's get right into it. I shot the whole thing, both audio and video, on my phone. It's a 2016 Samsung Galaxy J7 Metal. For the video, I used an app called Filmic Pro, which let me manually control some camera settings like exposure and frame rate and color and set the highlights to minus 25, which gave me a nicer highlight roll off, um, a smoothing of the highlights. And for support, I shot most of the movie using my Benro KH25 tripod. You gotta be a little careful with it, but it does the job. Attach the phone to the tripod. I bought this little cheap thing that you can just attach to the tripod and you have your phone mounted to your tripod. For the dolly shots, I found this piece of wood laying around in the neighborhood with a smooth surface. And I thought, if I get a piece of cloth and I put my tripod over it, I can slide smoothly. It was a little bit of a pain to use and I had to press the record button and run in front of it and pull the piece of cloth very carefully to avoid a little bump in the middle of the wood and not drop the ball on the camera movement. I wasn't even seeing what I was shooting, you know. <laughs> oh, it was a pain. But I managed to get most of the shots I had in mind. Oh, I also used my tripod as a steady can. Aí, dando carinho no gato. Virou! Boa, matou. I had no lighting equipment and the lamps in the apartment were not strong enough so actually you had to shoot the entire living room part during the day and bring the exposure down post to make it look like nighttime. To do that I clamped some white bed sheets to the open windows to soften the light and not cast any hard shadows. Because my phone is terrible in low light, even the first shot establishing the building had to be shot during the day through my niece's bedroom window. And I had to bring the exposure down in post, some lit windows from another shot and do some RGB curves gymnastics to make it work. Look at those curves. Look at those curves. Mm, curves. Oh, in some cases, I just had to improvise in the moment. Aí, aí vai lá, pá, pra um lado, pro outro, pro um lado de novo. Aí, você dá uma pausa, e aí olha pra baixo. E aí, aí desmonta. E esse passo a passo, assim, pra dar um tempinho, assim, pra gente apreciar a sua performance. <risos> Come out! Come out if you're a man! Come out if you're a man! E todo mundo parou. 
Duas mãos. Andou. E... Pro outro lado. Centro. Tá no centro. Viu? <risos> Porta! <risos> Abre os olhos. Sinistro. Sinistro. E a boca. Apart from the shot of the building, the rest of the color correction was pretty simple. I leveled all the clips so they match an exposure and color, added a slight greenish tint, a vignette and brightened the center of the frame throughout the whole length of the movie, because I was lazy with the color correction, and added the plug-in film convert to add some filmic colors and film grain to make it feel a little bit greedy and alive, and also to cover up the crappy phone camera look. Oh, and I removed some red colors from the villain's face to make her feel a little pale and kind of dead. In this shot, I had to be in front of the mirror, so I removed myself in post-production. I also reshot some stuff after shooting the stabbing scene, so I had to remove the red paint that was still on the walls. It was really hard to wash it off, I tried many times. For some of these shots, I used a very handy offset effect in Premiere. And in one shot I used After Effects, because I needed some better masking tools. And also because it connects with Premiere without the need to export, which was good because I was running low on storage space. We could very easily get the same effect using something like Natron, which is free and open source, and I use it myself sometimes, and just export the clip. For this shot, I tried several takes in camera, but I couldn't get it right because my improvised dolly track wasn't long enough. So I ended up going into Blender, another great free and open source software, projecting one of the shots onto some simple geometry and doing a very basic camera move. Then I added some film grain and finally added some camera shake uh, with Jarl's Deadpool camera shake presets that's available online for free. It's just a test actually to see if the idea was going to work. And if you pay attention, it looks pretty crappy. But I was lazy with the visual effects too, and I didn't want to go back and redo it properly, you know? So the test ended up in the movie. The toilet paper here was added in post. The cat simply wouldn't stay in place for too long. Now showing you the before and after looks pretty crappy, right? <laughs> Don't tell anyone. What's up? Go to the other guy. This guy. For the sound, I made this cue sheet with all the little sounds I needed, with time code, and I kept track of them. And for capturing those sounds fully in ADR, I used this free application called Motive Audio from Shure Plus, amazing application that records in uncompressed WAV files. I recorded every footstep and door opening, closing, everything. It's a pain to do, and I only used a portion of what I recorded. But when you put all these little sounds together in the movie, it really makes a world of a difference. The movie comes alive. The sound editing and quote-unquote mixing was all over the place with real mess. I did most of it in Premiere because I was lazy with the sound too, but music and sound effects I did in Reaper, which is a great program for this kind of stuff, especially when accompanied by a Vordio, which lets you export a timeline out of your video editor of choice and import into Reaper for mixing, editing, whatever you want to do. I didn't do all the music and sound effects myself though, some of it I got from freesound.org, Epidemic Sound, and Soundly. Just so I wouldn't have to do it myself. Lazy. Viro! Isso. 
quase, acho que só mais a última e vai acabar, mano, essa parte. <risos> só a virada. Sentiu, decidiu, tá gravando. Hum. Because safety is always number one priority, we made sure to always have a good gap between the knife and my sister, so it would never get close to her. To sell the idea that the knife was actually touching her, I used an old technique of shooting in reverse, where I had the villain pushing the knife very slowly, but pulling it quickly, pushing slowly and pulling it quickly, and in post-production you reverse the shot and speed it up 50% and voila! Use just a short piece of the clip and in a fast cut it really feels like she's stabbing her aggressively. Story or no story? That's the question. That is the question. No, no story. There was no story development, no script. The whole point of this was to not worry about scripts and writing, none of that, just focus entirely on directing. But for a week, I wrote down a series of ideas and shots that came to mind, and that became this incomplete shot list. Oh, and by the way, the villain is my mom. And the protagonist, the woman that gets murdered, is, of course, my sister. Such a sweet son and brother, huh? Initially, I wanted the villain to be a tall guy wrapped in toilet paper or bathroom tissue with his hair sticking out. But I called a friend of mine to do it and he was not available. So I was thinking of playing the villain myself. But the whole point of this was just to focus entirely on directing. But then, a few days before shooting began, my mom shows up out of the blue and she's very excited about the film and offering to help and she's got a lot of hair and a very expressive face so i looked at her and thought she would do a great monster and she loved the idea because i mean she was gonna be in the movie now the night before shooting began i scrapped the idea of the toilet paper entirely because toilet paper is fragile and it was gonna get messy and dirty and we have to keep rewrapping her, you know, it's just gonna be a big hassle. And all the while I'm thinking, why? Why does she do that? Why does she go out and kill people? What is the motivation? And I keep looking at my mom and thinking about it. I'm looking at my mom until it hit me. The hair. She's all crazy about hair. And she goes out and kills people and gets their hair, maybe to attach to her own hair or whatever, you know, for some weird reason. Later, I even thought of a whole backstory for her, but I'm gonna save that for later. But that's how this villain and the ending came about, the night before shooting the film. Isso. Beleza, agora mais uma, mas você já morreu. Peraí. Peraí, volta. <laughs> A câmera ficou totalmente vermelho. Uhum. Vai, vai ver. Vai, cara, tô cansada. <risos> Nossa, pelo amor de Deus. Manda ver. <risos> tô 10 horas aqui sem falar agora, manda ver. Ô, <risos> louco. Esse movimento aqui, ó, cansa, meu. Só quase o último já. Manda um ver. Vai.
Ah. 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 So there you have it, how I made tissue. Now, I had so many ideas for films and TV series and whatnot, but I never actually sat down and put a story down to paper, you know? I was hesitating a lot because I wanted my film to be well made and well produced. Oh, when I have this, when I have that. But at some point I had to, to say to myself, no, 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 forget about all that. Just grab your phone and make a little movie. You know, this is your first little home short film. It doesn't have to be great. It has to be made. So you can make all the mistakes and learn all the lessons and move on to your next one. And also to test yourself as a direct and see if your intuitions are really correct. Now, one last thing. I got pretty ill in the middle of making the movie. And I had to stop in the third day of shooting because I was spitting a lot of blood. And I got a little better, I got worse again, and I got to a point where I questioned whether I would even make it and finish the film, you know? And I, I, I'm lucky that I got better, and I'm just happy just for that, but it made me realize something very important. That the time to do what you aspire to do is right now. Whatever it is that you aspire to do that's important to you, that's inside of you, the time is now. The time is always now. Because now is all we have. The future is just imagination. So I encourage you to do the same. Do it. Do it now. Stay safe. Take care of yourself. And see you next time. Bye-bye. Ah! Olha o bugato. Tixe, viu? Tá, ela foi embora. Ai, foi embora. Ai, caramba. Just do it.